Welcome big dogs. Today we're going to evaluate stresses on a square shaft. So as you can see to the left, we're going to take into account three moments and three translational forces on a square cross section of a solid square shaft. So when would you want to do this? Well, you'd want to do this in an FEA analysis where you've defined stiffness in all six degrees of freedom. If you do that, you will get reaction forces in all six degrees of freedom. It is the most complete analysis you can do. It's often the most computationally intensive, but if you use connectors or, or you know some sort of uh, element like that, you can post-process the results uh, using a external program like in Python. So why would you want to do this? Because it is the most complete analysis. Um, you're going to combine axial stresses, shear stresses, bending stresses, and torsional stresses into one. You're going to superimpose those and you'll be able to calculate the worst case stress across the cross section. So before we you know, do any programming of that nature, I'm going to step through an example calculation. And then in the end, we'll write an object-oriented program in Python, probably in the next video, to show how to integrate all these features into an automated program. So the first thing you want to do if you're looking at a shaft or a tube is to determine the worst case stress locations. In this case, on a square shaft, your worst case stresses are going to occur at the outside of the midsections. This includes element 1, element 2, element 3, and element 4. You're going to have your worst case bending stresses acting there. You're going to have your worst case shear stresses acting in the middle. So I got five elements we're looking at and that's where we're going to evaluate our stresses at. Next, what you want to do is you want to break your force components into distributed stresses. So in this case, we have three components that are going to produce a shear load on the cross section. This includes the translational force in the x direction, the translational force in the y direction, and then the torsional stress created by the moment in the z direction. So if you apply the right hand rule, stick your thumb in the direction of the moment, the arrow that is pointing, and wrap your fingers around, you figure out how the stress flows. So in this case, for the positive moment, we're going to have a counterclockwise stress distribution with the worst case stresses occurring at the mid-span of the beams at elements 1, 2, 3, and 4. In the middle, you're not going to have anything. It's just uh, torsion doesn't create a stress in the middle. It's zero. So for a negative moment, you'd act in the clockwise direction. So if you draw these out, you can begin to recognize patterns. And in this case, your worst case stress on the outside is given by this equation. And then in the middle, you have zero stress. Similarly, for a shear force acting across the face, specifically force in the x direction, you're going to have a shear stress distribution modeled by a para parabola, which you see in most textbooks. So you won't have any shear stress on the outside here. It's zero at elements three and one, but in the middle you're going to have your peak stresses. So it's given by this equation right here. Similarly, for a shear stress in the y direction, you're going to have your peak stress at elements one, five, and three, and then you're going to have zero stress at the outside at elements two and four. So the next step is to look at your axial loads. So these are loads that will superimpose on top of each other as well. In this case, three components will produce an axial stress. It's the other three components that we hadn't looked. Your bending moment in the y direction, your bending moment in the x direction, and then your axial force Fz. So in this analogy, I'm, I'm using red indicating compression and green indicating tension. So if you evaluate each one of those loads on the cross section, you'll get a force distribution for a positive x moment like this. So once again, you apply your right hand rule, you'll figure out that you can have compression on the outside, tension up here, and the worst case stress is going to be at the top at element uh, 2, and then at element 4 you're going to have your, your negative stress here. And so it's just given by the fundamental equation, my over i is, is your stress distribution, and at, in the center here you will have zero stress due to that moment. You look at the y direction moment, you'll have a slightly different stress distribution. Um, you're going to have some stresses at elements 1 and 3, 0 in the middle, using just my over i. 
and then for a axial load you're going to have an even distribution among all elements so the axial load due to the force in the z direction is just simply the force over the area of the cross section so once you've kind of compounded all of that for each element you can create a table um, kind of like a cheat sheet to help you determine the stresses at elements 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 and the associated equations with that and you can begin to recognize patterns that you can use uh, take advantage of when you begin to program this in Python so that's a summary right there so now we'll go into an example calculation uh, just to reinforce this concept so we have six loads three moments three translational loads and these are the associated values acting at a face so how would you determine the stresses first you want to determine your area moments of inertia in this case we're looking at a one inch by one inch cross section and so since this square is symmetric across the x and y faces your area moments of the inertia are going to be equal to each other in this case we're just using fundamental equation right here to determine that our area moment of inertia is, is 1 over 12 inches to the fourth and we're going to be looking at element 4 so we would go to our table and we would pull out those equations to figure out what stresses are resulting from these loads in this case I'm given my x location my y location right here so y we're in the negative direction because our axis is defined in the middle right here our coordinate system is defined in the middle and then so you calculate your stresses and then you basically assign them a vector direction so once you do all that you can add them together superimpose them and put them on a stress element so I labeled them here our axial load is 4 psi I added all the ones acting in the z direction and then our shear stress is 49 and a half psi so once I have a stress element then I can plot more circle and I've shown this in a previous video it's actually an older video how to create this more circle but essentially we're looking to find out what our max stress is over here our min stress and our max shear stress and once we have those we can calculate margins and figure out if our design can handle the loads at hand so I hope you enjoyed the video I hope it was informative um, in the next video we're going to pull this all together into a program show how to program it in an object oriented programming format um, so um, I'll see you next time adios